In 1992, Michael Andace won the Booker Prize for his novel, The English Patient. Eight years later, his highly anticipated new novel, and Neil's Ghost has arrived. Publishers Weekly says it may well be the capstone of his career. In his fourth novel, he draws from his homeland of Sri Lanka, set in the mid-1980s. The title, character, and Neil returns to her war-torn native land on a human rights assignment. She teams with a Sri Lankan archaeologist to uncover the murder of a man whose skeleton is found on government land. I am pleased to have him here to talk about this novel and also to talk about um, writing in general. Welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you. Last time you and I here, we were talking about the English patient with... Yeah, I'm with Anthony. Yes, with Anthony Mengella. Um, tell me why you wanted to write this story. Well, I'd written a book about Sri Lanka, uh, about my family in Sri Lanka, about 15 years ago called Running in the Family. And it was kind of a light-hearted romp in some ways. But right. I mean, the war carries on um, and um, it seems to be never-ending. And I just wanted to write about this, uh, this time in, 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 the, in that country. It, it, uh, but not in a kind of on, on a, not politics on a larger level, not on the level of blaming people, saying who's right and who's wrong, but to write about what it's like to live in a country like that, in that kind of state. So that was really the focus. So you are writing here about a place more than you even write about character? No, no, it, it is about character, but it's not about, uh, or I'm not writing a book to say this, this party is right and this party is wrong. It, it's, it's more to do with... What violence does to you and all that? Yeah, you know, it's it, it's country of fear. It, it's... How do you cope with situations like this? Do you go in things like medicine? One of the characters, Gami, is a right. doctor, and he, he, he becomes manically involved with, with the work in the emergency wards. You know, so his, his whole private life disappears. And, but he embraces this kind of uh, drama around him. Some then, say he's the most interesting character in the book. Well, yeah, I mean, I think he is. He comes in about halfway, like, and you know, all those characters come in halfway are always the most interesting. Is that right? <laughs> well, it kept you know, happening in English patient. He came in halfway, and he... Yeah. I thought it stole the show. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. So I, it was the one I got closest to. So in a way, you're writing with two or three characters, and suddenly somebody enters, and that, that's when the drama doubles yeah. for me. But she is the interesting... I mean, she's the lead character. She is. You know, why choose a woman? Um, I just wanted to see what a woman would do in, in that very male world, I think. You know, Who had left that world to come back as a... Forensic specialist. As a forensic specialist yeah, and, yeah. and got involved in identification. Right. But she wanted to come back to look at human rights violations and other things. Well, I mean, she comes back in a, in a kind of grudging way. It's just someone, she comes back to the country that she was born in, but is now a complete stranger to. So she has to become re-educated into that country. And the, the archaeologist she's teamed with is the man who's sort of teaching her what the country has become and is warning her about her, her directness, um, a determination, which in the West can be a, a virtue, but in a, in a place that's war-torn and politically tense, could be quite dangerous. So, you know, that, that drama and debate goes on. How do you deal with a, a world where the politics is very dangerous around you? And when you're trying to find out, you know, um, the, the, um, the criminal in, in that situation. It could be true in the Balkans. It could be true in a lot of places. How do yeah. you deal with... I think that's also why I, was, I, I wanted to write this book now. It seemed, you know, although it's about Sri Lanka, it, it does seem to be about Central America and, 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 Africa. and parts of Europe. Yeah, and Rwanda, yeah. And, you know, it's such a kind of permanent story around us. And it's very difficult for us, the West, to kind of imagine being in that situation. You know, we see, we see the headline, we see the photograph, and then it's replaced by an, another country. And so I just want to get in there and kind of have the reader in that, in that landscape and talk about how people are, can become heroic in that situation and become, you know, worthy. And, and this story, the search of, to identify Sailor mm -hmm. and how you figure out... Well, you have all the kind of, you know, the, the drama of forensics and stuff yeah. like that, which is... And is this is, a device for you or does this have interest for you? Uh, it is a device, but I, I also am fascinated by any kind of work you know any uh, when you know when people are are focused on a, on, a, on a trade in any way i find that fascinating so whether it's a forensic specialist or, or an archaeologist or a doctor um that that kind of how that that career determines their personality that that's what interests me how that career yes. determines a personality or how the choice of that career is dictated by personality or no, no, I think, I think it affects personality. You know, the, so the Kip in English patient, for instance, right. being a sapper, being a, being a bomb disposal person, has a character that is kind of created out of that kind of profession, the way your 
you are in a way partly created by your professional I am as well. And how so is your personality? Uh, how does your career, how does your career mm -hmm. writer? Well, I, I'm someone who I'm, I'm alone most of the day from about nine thirty till about four every day. That makes me kind of very self-sufficient. It makes me someone who needs to be alone and to work and to, and to think alone. All those things are there. So that kind of does in a way govern how you, how you how you live with other people in a way. There's no great romance going on here. There's a lot of frustrated romance. Yeah, but well that's on. about the past and, yeah. and, and failure, yeah. right? Well, I or think lost love. I think one of the things that happens is that you know in this book, which is really about people, uh, the country separating, it's a country breaking up. By f focusing on that element in the novel for so long, so or five or six years, what happened was that everything in the book was about that. You know, so that the the love stories were about breakups, the the attempted love story is is sort of um, repressed. So, so it becomes a very celibate world in the middle of all this kind of um, tension. You do that by flashback. There's some flashback. We have a lot of Anil in, in America, you know, yeah. a bit more of a raucous life there than it is in Sri Lanka, certainly. You left Sri Lanka when you were what? Uh, I was 11. 11 to yeah. go to school in London. Yeah. yeah. And I've gone back uh, a lot over the last, um, you know, number of years. I go back usually every year if I can. For how long? About a month or two, usually, if I can. What's the pull back for you other than just it is home? Well, that's pretty big. Also, it's a country I love, you know. It, 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 uh, in, in spite of the, the fact that it's an, a tragic country, it, it's also a remarkable country, you know. And one of the reasons I wanted to write about the archaeology in the book is that, it's, you know, it's, it's a very complex, intricate, ancient culture. You know, it's not just a contemporary war zone. It, it's, uh, it has a huge history uh, that's fascinating, and I, I find that really interesting. I would think that would be a great part about writing. I mean, you can decide, I want to know more about the archaeology. I want to know more. Mm -hmm. And well, so that, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to write about it. You know? Exactly. Find out about it so that I can. Well, I mean, I, that, that's, that's the real pleasure of writing. You know, it, it's like, it's like a, a free education in a way. You kind of go, okay, I'm, I'm interested in bridge building. Or I'm interested in bomb disposal. And so I can research that. I can go and talk to people who are doctors and working in emergency rooms and stuff like that. And I have no pride stuff. in this question, but, but where are you in, character, in these characters? Where would I see you? I think uh, I'm in most of the characters there, I would say. I'm in Anil, I'm in Garmini. Where are you in Anil? Well, I'm the person who, you know, I'm the person who was born in Sri Lanka right, and I'm, right, I'm going back. Right, exactly. Um, I'm Garmini in a way because I'm, I'm a younger brother and there's, you know, yeah. there's a, 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 a few scenes in the book that I kind of drawn from uh, my own um, childhood, I suppose. Uh, and with, with your older brother? Yeah, but mostly about myself, you know, I mean, there was a scene in the book where I, Garmini kind of uh, tries to shoot out a flame on a candle with an air rifle, you know, and gets help from his relatives, and that was something that came out of my childhood, too. There's also, the, this, this is also like English Patient, which you have uh, two men in love with one woman. It seems to be a, a Thing constant for you. problem. <laughs> <laughs> a constant problem or a constant, uh, a well, recurring theme? A recurring theme, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah. Well, not for me, but I'm just, you know, that's the drama of uh, writing fiction, you know, you can't. One person in love with one woman is okay, but you know, two is two more is, interesting. Two is, yeah, it's it's interesting. interesting. Yeah, she's trying to recapture what? I mean, this interesting woman is trying to recapture what? She's, I think, she's there with, with a kind of determination to try and find a solution to a to a to a, a problem or a, or a mystery. And I think she's obsessed with that. And she's obsessed with that in a way that is a very Western determination. You know, I mean, I think um, we we like to think there are solutions. Uh, no, no, to exactly. problems. In, exactly. That's you know, an American in, thing. It is an, well, it's, it's, it's an English thing, too. And, yeah. it's just a, and I think in Asia there is a much more of a, an awareness of, you know, a kind of, there's this kind of shrug. Perhaps it, you have to live with it, you know. And it's not something you want to live with, but we have to live with it. Take a little thing like pouring freezing water on your body. Okay. Where does that come from? Just came to you in a moment? Um, yeah, I mean, one collects all these little bits from various, at various story, times. Somebody tells you a story and you say, aha, yeah. that'll reappear somewhere. Because it'll well, just, don't even, have a you, character who will be perfect for it. Yeah, you don't probably put it away in a little notebook, but somehow, you know, when you are writing this, I mean, you are actually writing the story, you know, the, the character builds itself in front of you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't model the characters on one specific person, but there's a kind of general form and then all these other aspects and remembrances come in. This book is partly about that, as you've already said. What happens to people 
in which death and conflict are an omnipresence in their life. Well, in a way, uh, a lot of the book is about how various people in the book try and deal with that. Yeah. I mean, Garmini is someone who uh, embraces the, the chaos and, and, and the wards and, and sort of, you know, his whole private life disappears. Sarath, in a way, has also kind of retreated from the world and has hidden, in, in some ways, in ancient cultures. Anil is there unearthing things frantically, you know. Um, there's an old... Uh, Archaeologist who's uh, sort of retreated from the world. So there are lots of forms of he's retreat. He's an interesting character. Palipana, yeah, he's actually a mm. lovely character. And, uh, Where'd he come from? This is the guy who's going to help them figure out how they can identify a skeleton that yeah. looks almost unidentifiable. Right. And, and he's an old teacher of um, the archaeologist Sarath. So they go to visit him, and he's this kind of cantankerous old guy, and, but he's almost also quite blind. lovely. Yeah. And he's looking after his, uh, his niece, who's sort of, whose parents have been killed. And he's sort of a delight, and, and in spite of the fact that he's just accepting all this terror around him, you know, and, and, just, and, he's, and he's inventing history. And living in history. isolation. Living in isolation, yeah. And uh, there was a kind of archaeologist in Sri Lanka many years ago who did, in fact, at the last stage of his right life, start, you know, turning things into fiction, and um, I just took that nugget. And, and you knew about that how? Just through research or just because you were Sri Lanka? Well, so I talked to someone in Sri Lanka. And, and they told you about this character? Yeah. See, that's what I love. I mean, that fascinates me about the rock, you know. Mm -hmm. Someone tells you about this guy. And, you know, the thing is, you know, what's very interesting about when you're writing a novel is that the real stories around you that you discover are so remarkable. You know, who would have thought that a major archaeologist could suddenly kind of slip into fiction at the last stage of his life? It's, it's difficult to invent such a situation. So that's why, you know, basing a book on some reality and then taking it off from there is, is uh, most interesting to me. And, and what about Ananda? Ananda is, is this guy who uh, is, a, is an artist who, who's a uh, job. Strong. He, he, he's paid the eyes on, on the Buddha statues, um, and, you know, the, the, the statue is nothing until the eyes, paint, the eyes are, are painted, and then it becomes a god. And that's how they're going to identify Sailor. Well, he, that's his job. Uh, then he, he helps identify the, the, the skull. Uh, yeah. He, he re recreates the so skull. So it has a... Yeah, it has a face. But, you know, the, the interesting thing about the um, eye painting is that the man is never... The artist is never allowed to look into the eye uh, directly when he he's creating He always has to paint with his back to the eye. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because it's unholy or... It's a sacrilegious to some extent, you know, to be there in the actual creation of the god. So you are looking at it through a reflection. I think this is your best work? Best book? Uh, it was the most difficult book to write and, and uh, most painful book to write. So I, I hope Why it is. painful? Well, you're dealing with um, a subject that's very, very difficult. And, and, um, what, you know, the, the ravages of war? Yes, yes, the ravages of war. It's also you know, the ravages of, of a country which I, you know, I'm very close to. So that was painful, but I, I probably is my best. I mean, I, I, it's, in a way, it was the book I was most focused on in some way. And... Uh, found most difficult, so I hope that it was the best. Still edit Brit? Yes, we do. Yeah. You and your wife, right? Yeah. And it, um, you live in Canada now? We live in Canada, and it comes out two or three times a year. Okay. Congratulations on this. Um, it's a great story, and, and people are, are raising interesting questions, and, and it, is, it, it takes you on a journey to places that, a place you may not have ever been and tells you a story about ancient culture as well as the contemporary culture of set in, in terms of people trying to live you know, with the constant fear of, of the events around them, yeah. you know, and they see horrifying violence. One day you see young kids, and the next day you see heads on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's some hope, hopefully. There's hope? Where's yeah. the hope? I think the hope is strange in the, in the characters, you know, that the, the people in the story are, are people who are, you know, gracious and... and um, in the end, very honorable. I think that's where all hope lies. I do too. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. From the author of The English Patient, Michael Ondaatje, Anil's Ghost. We'll be right back.